Have you ever wondered how close our world comes to the dystopian narratives we see in literature? In the realm of fiction, dystopian narratives have long fascinated and horrified us in equal measure. These tales, often set in a future society characterized by oppressive societal control and the illusion of a perfect society, serve as stark warnings about the potential pitfalls of our own world. Consider George Orwell's 1984, a chilling portrayal of a society under the iron grip of an authoritarian regime, where privacy is a bygone concept and double-think is a way of life. Or Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale, where women's rights are stripped away in a theocratic regime, reducing them to mere vessels for procreation. Then there's Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, a novel that presents a society obsessed with consumerism and hedonism, losing sight of genuine human connection and individuality. These narratives, while fictional, bear an uncanny resemblance to aspects of our own society. Orwell's 1984 echoes in the ever-increasing surveillance and erosion of privacy in our digital age. The oppressive regime in The Handmaid's Tale mirrors the ongoing struggles for women's rights and autonomy in various parts of the world. And the hedonistic society in Brave New World mirrors our own, where consumerism often trumps meaningful connections and individuality. But what does this mean for us? Is our reality merely reflecting these dystopian narratives? Or are these narratives shaping our reality? Are we unwittingly walking down the path these authors warned us about? Or are we just finding parallels where there are none? As we delve deeper into this exploration, we invite you to draw your own conclusions. But remember, the dystopian narratives are more than just fiction. They are cautionary tales. They are mirrors held up to society, reflecting our flaws and the potential consequences of our actions. So, as we delve deeper, keep in mind this question. Are these dystopian narratives merely fiction, or do they reflect a disturbing reality? The mark of the beast, a symbol of control and loss of freedom, has been a recurring theme in dystopian narratives. But could such a concept manifest in our world? In dystopian literature, the mark of the beast often symbolizes an extreme form of control. The mark is usually a physical or symbolic identifier enforced by a totalitarian regime, marking the loss of individual freedom and autonomy. It's a chilling concept, the notion of being branded, of having your identity stripped away and replaced by a symbol of subjugation. Take a moment to consider George Orwell's 1984. The omnipresent surveillance, the thought police, the constant manipulation of truth, while it may not be a physical mark, the oppressive control over thought and action is a metaphorical mark of the beast. Now, let's turn our gaze to the real world. The idea of a mark of the beast may seem far-fetched, but when we examine certain trends, the lines start to blur. Consider the advent of data surveillance. Every click, every like, every share is tracked, recorded, analyzed. Our digital footprint, our online identity, is a mark of sorts one that can be used to predict and influence our behaviors. And let's not forget the erosion of privacy. With the advent of smart devices and the Internet of Things, our homes, once sanctuaries of privacy, are now filled with devices that listen, watch, and record. Our movements, our conversations, even our sleep patterns are no longer private. These real-world trends bear a striking resemblance to the mark of the beast. Our identities are being reduced to data points, our behaviors predicted and manipulated, our privacy eroded. Are we not, in a way, marked by these forces? Of course, it's not a perfect parallel. We're not living in an Orwellian nightmare, at least not yet. But the similarities are there, and they're worth considering. So, as we can see, the lines between dystopian fiction and our reality may not be as clear as we once thought. Now, let's dive into some specific examples of how our world mirrors these dystopian narratives. Our reality today often seems to echo the grim futures depicted in dystopian literature. Take, for instance, the pervasive government surveillance we see in George Orwell's 1984. Today we live in a world where our digital footprints are constantly tracked, our emails scanned, our locations noted, and our online behaviors analyzed. This omnipresent surveillance in the name of security mirrors the dystopian society Orwell painted years ago. Then there's the erosion of privacy, a theme prevalent in many dystopian narratives. 
In Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, the concept of privacy is virtually non-existent. In our current age of social media and smart devices, our lives are increasingly on display. Our personal information, preferences, even our innermost thoughts are readily shared and exposed. This blurring of public and private life is eerily reminiscent of Huxley's vision. Another chilling parallel is the suppression of free speech. In Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451, books are banned and intellect is discouraged. Today, we see similar trends with censorship, cancel culture, and the policing of thought. The freedom to voice our opinions, to question, to think critically, is being undermined. Just as in Bradbury's dystopia, the freedom of thought is becoming a luxury, not a right. Dystopian literature often serves as a cautionary tale, warning us of the potential dangers of certain societal trends and technological advances. Yet, we can't ignore the fact that some aspects of these dystopian worlds are already unfolding in our reality. These narratives provide us with a mirror, reflecting back our own society's tendencies towards surveillance, the erosion of privacy, and the suppression of free speech. They serve as stark reminders of the path we could tread if we allow fear, control, and ignorance to dominate. These parallels between dystopian fiction and reality are not merely coincidental, but rather a reflection of our society's fears and anxieties. As we reflect on these parallels, it is essential to consider what this means for us and our future. We've journeyed through the eerie corridors of dystopian narratives, where symbols of control and dehumanization loom large. We've ventured into the real world, finding unsettling echoes of these fictional terrains in our own societies. And now, we stand at the precipice of understanding, staring into the abyss that is our potential future. The chilling parallels between dystopian fiction and reality are not just coincidental. They serve as a stark reminder of the path we could tread if we allow power to go unchecked. If we lose sight of our shared humanity, it's a path paved with fear, control, and a loss of personal freedom. Yet it isn't all doom and gloom. Remember, dystopian narratives are not prophecies, they are warnings. They are mirrors held up to society, reflecting our worst fears and darkest tendencies. But we are not mere spectators in this unfolding narrative. We are the authors. We hold the pen. The implications of these parallels are profound. They urge us to be mindful, to question, to resist complacency. They call for our active participation in the story of our future. We must be vigilant, ever watchful of the signs of encroaching dystopia in our societies. We need to foster open dialogues, question authority, and champion individual rights. We must strive for balance for a world where technology serves us, not the other way around. We must remember the value of human connection, of empathy and kindness, in a world increasingly marked by division. In our hands, we hold the power to shape our future, to chart our own course. We can pen a narrative that champions freedom, that celebrates diversity, that fosters unity and understanding. We can choose to veer away from the dystopian path, to write a story that is uniquely ours, a story that is marked by hope, resilience, and shared humanity. Remember, the power to shape our future is in our hands. Let's not allow our world to become the dystopia we read about in books.